Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, 40 and skeptic and technical agnostic. Um, this is a reply, of course, to CBC TV's um, uh, interview on the hour of in defense of food. I'm moving away briefly from my uh, ongoing work on debunking paranormal phenomena and trying to explain that to uh, something which, of course, I'm studying in school right now uh, or in university right now, which is pertaining to uh, bio and organic chemistry. Um, more specifically, organic chemistry. But um, I'd actually like to comment and say that I actually agree large chunks of this interview. Uh, but there were a couple of things in relation to the grocery stores to what influenced people to buy processed foods that have been uh, that aren't really talked about here or not as talked as much in the book. Um, the book's focus is more so strengthening on um, you know uh, knowing how to eat actual food versus product processed food. Um, however, for people who are interested in the uh, in the reason in the other reason as to why uh, as to why we buy what food we do, um, go look for the clip on Darren Brown. Um, clip, uh, type into the into the um, YouTube search bar, Darren Brown, comma grocery store or comma supermarket. And what's interesting is that he actually does a clip of uh, mentally in, uh, of doing a um, uh, a subliminal suggestion technique on a grocery store manager to get him to buy vinegar. And the thing is that. Um, you know, uh, due to coloring and color placement and all this sort of thing, um, we are a lot more manipulated. Uh, well, again, this is just the mentalist aspect. There's two uh, two things I want to talk about here. One of which is the mentalist aspect, and this is the uh, this is my from my magician expertise, understanding about how um, we go through this, and my ex political science student expertise. Um, we um, we often get influenced by a large chunk of stuff in our surroundings. Uh, um, this has been known through media and advertising before. Um, if you put colors in certain areas, you will give associations. Um, bright colors often mean stuff. It's one of the reasons why junk mail often it's a bright pink and bright, you know, bright uh, neon colors and stuff like that. Now people, of course, are beginning to realize that this is junk mail, so they're starting to fight back against. But you get my point. Like. Um, uh, also, big prices, nine ninety nine. Um, uh, you know, the the advertising of stuff as cheap is also another reason which will just draw people into processed foods. And um, now, that's the first reason. The second reason is, um, as um, uh, as the author of In Defense of Food pointed out, um, we often are uh, looking at what the uh, the biggest science is and what have you, which might always be surpassed. Well, some of it might be, it might not be. Again, you know, it, it may not be surpassed for a few years. It may not even be surpassed, period. Like, uh, some things are still good. Like, for example, we know that we do need fruits, meat, grains, and, um, you know, we do, need, uh, we do need fruits and vegetables, meats, and gra uh, meats, grains, and milk products in our diet. We do know that we need those basics. Like, for example, like that, that always has been there. And we do need a certain number of serving sizes. The problem is, though, is the fact that the serving size keeps switching, and the worst part of this, and this is what's more important about, uh, and, the, and he's right about the uh, nutrients versus, um, now the thing is, um, as a chemistry student, I actually know um, about half of these chemicals. That, uh, when I take a look at, uh, you know, at any processed food, say for example, I'm a big cereal addict, so I will often not only read the nutritional, I'll check the ingredients for what's in there, and I'll actually re recognize about half the chemicals in there. The thing is, what bugs the crap out of me is the fact that I don't know what ratios they're in there, and uh, you know. And this is the other thing: if you're a bi if you're a chemistry student, um, if you're a chemistry student, uh, and I I'm I'm talking to my fellow uh, I'm talking to my fellow BSc student uh, student chem majors here. Um, if you are actually aware of the chemicals that are in here, um, be very aware of the um, be very aware and actually demand of food companies if they claim that they're putting uh, a certain type of nutrient in or putting a certain type of um, uh, a certain you know uh, you know if they're claiming that they're putting a certain type of nutrient in or something like that ask them for the molar concentration or ask them for the percentage the mass concentration of what they're putting in there because if you don't know what the ratios are um, you know I mean like the thing is the science like you know, if you go straight to the scientists, they will tell you exactly what sort of nutrients you need. And I mean, and the science is fairly reliable on large chunks of this. I mean, large chunks of it do get replicated. The problem, and this is why, and this is why I agree with him in terms of natural foods, is that if you know what sort of foods you're supposed to be eating in terms of serving size, like just in general, uh, naturally, um, or if you just get an idea of that, then you will be getting the natural right amount of these um, of these uh, nutrients and stuff like that that the science is saying you need. The problem is the fact, or at least uh, from a chemistry perspective, um, one of the big things that I found is the biggest problem is the fact that um, we get a lot of the um, a lot of the chemical terms almost become buzzwords to the point where it's like, oh, it's got this and it, it must be good. But 
it may only have a small amount of that nutrient vis-a-vis -vis large amounts of chemicals that could be harmful for you, say preservatives or things that will you know prevent uh, rot. Um, or or it could be that it has a high nutrient, but then it, but uh, but it may even have a sm very small amount of uh, of some of these uh, preservatives. Then again, maybe even some of these uh, preservatives in very small amounts might give you toxic effects. The problem is is that uh, for chemistry majors. Um, we can get some of that, but we without the ratios of knowing what is uh, is ratio to what in terms of, say, for example, in margarine. If we don't actually know um, what percentage of, uh, you know, uh, we, if we don't know what percentage by mass or um, percentage in parts per million by volume of uh, each of these chemicals is in there, we can't calculate um, what sort of input we're getting vis-a-vis -vis the safety guidelines or, or uh, you see what I mean? The thing is that you can know what this sort of stuff is. But you can end up getting, um, I think that, uh, I guess my concern is that in the process of trying to go against uh, foods which are harmful or knowing that processed foods have these chemicals in them, we can go too far the other way, um, like certain organic, uh, like certain uh, people who support organic food I know, who say reject all, um, who say reject all uh, Western food, be it biotechnology, uh, you know, be it bioengineered, uh, processed, anything like that. Um, without knowing anything about what what's even in there, there may be even some which are completely, uh, you know, entirely, um, which may uh, have entire uh, entirely just uh, just healthy uh, healthy stuff in them and no chemicals, and we might not even know it. Uh, another example is bread. Um, a lot of breads, um, some of the most processed, some of the the most processed commercial breads do still rot and do still get mold on them. So the question is, is that even if there's preservatives in there, why is there mold and fungus and bacteria growing on them? So the, uh, the problem remains here that uh, in some of these areas, it's a gray area. And we need a lot more. We need to know what the ratios are of each of these in here. We need to know the full technical details in order to be able to handle this. Uh, so say, for example, if you buy at the outside of the market, there are some both processed breads and non-processed breads out there. And it's up to you to determine which. Well, which do you buy? You don't know because of the fact that you're not sure if what ingredients are going in there and what ratios they're at. I mean, there's this nutritional information, but it doesn't really give you, um, it gives you uh, uh, ratios of what, of, what new, uh, of what ingredients are in there and what percent per serving, but it doesn't give you the uh, numbers for the chemicals and preservatives that are in there per serving. You see what I mean? My concern is the fact that we might go too far the other way in rejecting stuff. Um, anyway, I guess my point is um, science above all else. And uh, for people who are um, for people who are interested in trying to learn uh, more about the process of your food, not just through um, what they're talking about here, um, you know, watch this video. My can, my guess, my point is, he's right. The uh, the food industry and the government have screwed this up before as well, and the scientists are genuinely trying to do their best. So go straight to the scientists, get the peer-reviewed literature, cut out the middleman, and then when you actually uh, you know through the science textbooks, peer-reviewed literature. Um, talking to your doctor, um, go get the actual technical details there. And then when you actually get uh, the names of the chemicals or what have you, you know, list them down and go to your doctor and get concerns or what have you. And then ask the company to reveal in what ratios they're actually in there. Or better yet, take it to your local university and uh, get your organic chem department to analyze it for you uh, to, uh, to find it. Um, there's a good half dozen anal analytical techniques, and I could easily uh, take my cereal and go to my, one of my professors and say, listen, I'm concerned about stuff that's in here. Um, you know, uh, how, what are the ratios in here and what are the safety lines? Um, you know, what are the safety guidelines here? So, you know, if you're looking for that, um, you know, the tools in here are extremely helpful, but they're only one aspect. If you want to, um, if you want to get uh, even better, take this book as a good introduction. Um, and then um, when you're dealing with foods that are in gray areas, like, uh, like breads or the like, um, Go talk to your doctor as well. I would strongly advise going and talking to your doctor. Go talk to a biochemist at your local university. Um, you know, get some technical details on a lot of this stuff. And if need be, um, get some of this food submitted for analysis. Because if they do find anything harmful in there, then chances are that science will come to public light and the, co and the companies will have to pay for it for, uh, for having duped you. So, again, uh, science first above all else. Watch this video. I uh, I highly recommend this uh, video. I ha I also highly recommend the book In Defense of Food. Um, you know, um, but I also recommend going and talking to your doctor and talking to universities as well. These are very very good introductions and aids in looking for this stuff. But they're only scratching the surface, and there's a lot of gray areas which this book does not necessarily cover, or um, it would cover it. But you know, there's a lot more detail that you need to know. So in that case, go straight to the peer reviewed literature. <laughs> you know. Um, 
check the references in that book and go read the original references and their references to be able to get a fuller idea of what you uh, of what you sh uh, of how to better choose what you eat. Anyway, uh, that's just my take as a chemistry student. Um, I hope that's been helpful and informative. Toodles.